Greetings and salutations. How is everyone doing today? Today, goodness gracious me, goodness gracious my, this has been an interesting day so far. We have been wrangling. We've been, you know, I had my sleeves rolled up. I was plugging in wires, unplugging things. I had a wrench at some point. Um, But we finally managed to get the technical details of this stream working because we're trying something entirely new today. This is a stream where we will be not only conlanging, but map making? Map making, that's the phrase, right? We're cartographers over here. We're interested in cartography. That's what we're interested in. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And to facilitate this cartographic adventure, we have the one, the only, Lucy. Lucy, feel free to unmute yourself at any point now. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, Can you Lucy. Hear me? I, let's, Hi, how's it going, guys? Let's get the um, the opinion on the sound from the chat. Are are our levels good? Are we all are we all in order here? Say some more things, Lucy. Talk about your day. How has your day been? Hello. Um, not too bad. Uh, just some technical issues with my computer. Thank you. I I thought only Windows did spontaneous updates, but um, I guess it turns out that that is not the case. <laughs> so sorry, Carmen. You should have seen me immediately before the stream. I was like, I was dressing, but it's fine. We're all here now, and we are ready. To do some 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 map make, making, aren't we? Yep, should 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 okay. do. Um, I hope you guys like it. <laughs> so, I am going to welcome in future YouTube, and then we will get started and show show you what uh, how it's going to work. All right, bum ba bum bum bum. YouTube, welcome. We have on stream with us today, Lucy. Say hi, Lucy. Hello. There she is. And we're about to do some cartography. We've got some, we've been doing a lot of world building lately and, and we feel the need for maps. So let's, let's make some maps, shall we? I'm going to go over onto the side and what, well, Lucy, we can see your, we can see part of Lucy's desktop and then we can see part of mine where I have some phonological inventories um, arranged so that we can make place names. So would you like to walk us through what we're doing today, Lucy? Sure. <laughs> um, so um, I'm going to essentially live draw uh, our map. I've got some thoughts of some visuals. Um, this is the lovely, this is the lovely mock-up uh, made by, who made this, Colin? Maj made this. I don't know if you're in the Thank chat, you, Maj, but uh, we doff our hats to you. Oh, yeah, yes, I see I'm you making... there. Oh, good. Hi. I've got the chat up so I can see you guys. <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you for this map. I'm going to be making good use of it. Um, and, yeah, so Colin and I were having a think about what kind of what kind of maps we would like. Um, I'm not going to be drawing some of the more technical climate style maps or anything. 
this is just going to be the nice little area, maybe some trees, you know, something fun. Um, you're looking at some quite old maps, um, such as this one, if it comes up on the stream. Indeed it does. There you go. Um, yes, come on, when, when was this map from? So this is a, a 17th century map. Um, this is by the, the great Mercator of the projection's name. Um, this is a map of Livonia, so you can uh, place that in the sort of eastern half of the Baltic um, in present day terms. Do you want to zoom in a little bit, Lucy, so we can see some of the detail on there? Yeah. One thing that's uh, lovely about older maps is that they never felt any shame in just randomly breaking a word, you know, L-I, enter. Vonia. And sometimes it's actually hard to find where the rest of the word is. Like, look at some of these. You see at the top left there, you have Sueti Aipars, so part of Sweden. Um, but you have Sue, and then a large gap, and then Ti, and then a large gap, and then Pars. And I just love that. So we may take inspiration from that in our design have some elements of um this is some this is this next bit is what i did earlier <laughs> um but uh, i'll be drawing most of it uh on stream just did some grid work because i don't think anyone wants to see me measure pixels <laughs> yeah we have a little bit of that tv cooking show you know and here's a here's one i made earlier but uh, mostly it'll just be it'll be live so what okay so shall we get started sure and um, while you talk and discuss i'm going to mute myself so let me know if you need me all right I'll unmute. okay Bye. <laughs> we will talk to you later lucy so we are using an equirectangular projection here um to simplify things this is our we have, uh, Oh, I feel like I'm a color commentator on TV or something. You can see the uh, the wonderful climate map that Ma just made. That's a fan that's some fantastic work. We've seen some some really great mapping coming out of that corner uh, lately. And uh, I don't know what you uh, how you feel, Steve, but I think this is uh, some some fantastic cartography. Oh yeah, sure it is. You know, the other thing that I was gonna say is that a lot of these continents are just sort of beautifully shaped, and you're seeing some uh, some really some really innovative stuff. The owl breaking up was a great touch. You know, and I think the other, and you could go on like that, but I probably won't, uh, unless. Yeah, so essentially what we have here, we have to make the outlines of the landforms to serve as the basis. This is, as Lucy said, not going to be the, um, not going to be a, a truly scientific map. This is going to be more like an in-world map. Um, and in our world building discussion, I don't know if we mentioned this uh, on stream recently, but the the sort of year zero, the present day in this world, um, is is roughly equivalent in technology level to the 18th century on our world. And the thinking behind this is there are, I think, too many uh, medieval world building um, projects that certainly I've done in the past. So I wanted to, to explore a, a different time period um, and also not have to think too much about industrialization and and things like that. So we fixed uh, the date, the rough technology level as at 18th century. Um, and then we go back from there. So we can play around in different parts of history. I'm thinking that this map, given that it's a, a 17th century map, this would be a map uh, just depicting 100 years before the present, uh, made by some of the cartographers of, of perhaps one of our little, one of our little world, in world uh, empires or cultures or what have you. So, so that's the, the thought. Um, I think we, we have, uh, we have some climate zones mapped out. Uh, the climate zones are still somewhat uh, under discussion, but as a starting point, we've, um, we've been making some mood boards. I'm going to show those while we're, while we're, unfortunately, Figma's not not uh, friendly to, to very small screens. I'm just going to briefly, I don't know how to do it. 
Does anyone know on Figma how you get rid of these sidebars? No. Okay. Well, I was going to show you our nice mood boards, but it's very difficult. But you have in the uh, the area that Lucy's drawing right now, you have some of the the more northerly the more northerly climate zones. We have a boreal zone. I don't know if you can see. It's so small. It's so small. Figma, what is wrong with you? Can I can I do this? Okay, that's a bit better. So here's our boreal mood board. We also have beautiful areas of Mediterranean coastline in the uh, south, southwestern uh, corner of the continent that Lucy just scrolled away from. No, don't, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the one. Um, and then we have the oceanic climate, which you can see is, well, it's a bit dark now, but it's the, the bright green area that I'm circling with my mouse here. And that is the famed Eustamia. So one thing as we're going about this is we're going to be coming up with some place names because I don't know about you, but I'm tired of saying continent A, continent B, et cetera. So I think we need to come up with some, some names for things. And we have a little document here. We'll try and make these, this text a little bit bigger. Do, 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 do. This is supposed to be 18. That's our, our normal. It's maybe 18 is a bit too, too big for the amount of green real estate we have. Mm -hmm. There we go. So we've been collecting some place name ideas. Um, but because these are going to be in world place names, we need we need them to be in a, a language that we've made. So I was thinking we could have, we could use our, we could sort of figure out which languages we're going to use for the place names on this map, at least, for different parts of the world. So I think given that um, Eustamia, the language, Eustamia call, is um, something of a classical language for the sort of northeastern part of the map, we could use it for for naming things. We could use Lenadilef as well um, for the areas in, and I'll show it to you when we, we zoom out a little bit, um, but the, the areas in which Lenadilef was spoken. So we have these two languages. I think we should use Birai for the place names in the desert region of the southwestern continent. And I think we should use some combination of uh, the different Sakrat languages for the place names in the Sakrativerse. So Kranzlor, we know. Quak, we know. Um, and Sasyut. Oops. So I think these are going to be our, our primary naming languages um, for the different regions. And these will be <laughs> these will be okay, yeah, we got to get some quad names in there as well. That's true. Quad. And these will be the languages we'll work with. So I've prepared for us some inventories so that we can make up place names. Uh, I've got the Birai inventory here. I've got the Proto-Sakrat inventory here. And then we'll be able to derive the, the daughter languages from that. I've got Eustamia's inventory here. And I've got Lenadilef's inventory here. So if at any point you would like to see any of these inventories, just write so in the chat. And I will, um, I will show them. So let's check in with Lucy, see how it's going over there. Lucy, how's everything going? Hello. <laughs> um, so I'm just drawing, oops, hang on. I'm just drawing the land masses. So 
there will be a an effect reveal shortly um but i'm just going over the edges to make sure they're nice and smooth um so i will try and be as quick as possible <laughs> i've got the other half to do so i think what we need to do is um is name these continents and let's start from our our top our, our very topmost the uh the continent that lucy's just drawing the islands off of the coast of now and there was a suggestion now where was the suggestion northern b far away i like this this idea that we ha use eustamia maybe for, uh, as the language that we name this northern continent in and we we give it a name like distant or far away um and I'm sorry, I don't remember whose uh, whose idea that was. So if that was yours, jump in and and uh, take claim. So let's look at our. And unfortunately, I don't have the screen real estate to do this now. But um, I'm going to look in our Eustamia lexicon, and I'm going to see if we have a word for distant or far away. And it does not look like we do, which means that we get to create it. So let's get um, let's get Lexergy open and let's get and apologies I can't see the chat while I'm doing this because uh, I only have two monitors. Uh, let's see. Let's get a nice protocol root and let me let me put up the protocol inventory as well because I think that will be of interest to you. Proto, where is my proto lexic, uh, my proto phonology? Ba ba da ba ba ba. Sharraka, sharraka, and so on. I can never find anything in this document. Okay, here we go. So the phonology of protocol as I do this, I wonder, do you think they teach courses on how to get that sports announcer patter? I would really like to take one of those courses. I think it would be a really good, a really good thing to learn. Okay. Check, check out that inventory, Steve. That is some fantastic. Look at these labials. You know, we haven't seen that since 1987 when, uh, and then you could go on, which you see, that's what you'd learn in the course. You'd learn to go on. You'd learn all of these statistics. Colin, you'd learn everything. Colin, I don't think you need a course. I'm putting it out there. No, I, I need a course. you're good as you are. No, no, no. I, I, I rec you know what? I you, recognize. You could teach the course. No, <laughs> here's why. Because I'm on the foothills of this mountain. And you know, maybe it looks like I'm looking down to the plains, but I know that I'm looking up to the peak of that mountain. That's called humility. I suppose there's always room to grow. <laughs> there certainly is Steve. Look, who's the Steve? I don't know. He sounds great. Uh, okay. So I'm going to look up some of this some of the stuff from the chat because I've been neglecting the chat. Chat, my apologies. I have more windows than normal today. Um, I love this Lequari as an idea for the uh, for the name for distant, the root for distant. Let's see uh, what that looks like in Eustamia. So here we go. I'm going to put some sound changes in effect. Poor Eustamia. Doesn't get as much uh, play as Lena Thyleff these days. Because, you know, Lena Thyleff is just so crazy. God bless it. Okay, so then La Quari turns into Oh, did I miss? Because there's no R, is there? Yeah, we don't have an R. 
So I think we may have to do something like Le Quali. I think that might be the way to go. Le Quali. And then we have Lirali or Lirali. Lirali. Initial stress. Lirali. So how will we write that? That would be L I X A L I We don't have our writing system sorted out, so let's just use a Latin alphabet for uh, for this map. Um, and then one day, you didn't think we'd stop um, stop short of writing systems, did you? No. All right, let's get back to the chat. Oh yeah, Elijah, that, that quantum does. Let's use that for something. What can we use that for? Ah, uh, no, it doesn't because we need, um, it's CV, it's strict CV, so we need quantum, quantuma. And then we get canidim. I don't know why I'm writing these all in caps. It just looks cool. Back to the chat. Ooh, we're getting some good echo. Thank you. Mikuna. Everyone loves these labialized feelers. And you know, what's not to like? Mikuna. Ooh, I think we need to check in with Lucy. Lucy, you're back on another continent. What is going on down there? <laughs> Am I off screen? Let me, let me, uh, there we go. Can everyone see? Yep, you're good. Excellent. Yes, are you working on naming, uh, naming stuff on the other continent? Yes. Now we're coming up with some names on the other continent. There's also actually some names that SHIP has contributed from the, uh, the pre-call peoples. So that's something we can talk about uh, at some point. Uh, essentially, Definitely. we have, because the, that continent, uh, and forgive me for blanking on the names of my own poorly named uh, continents. Let me just get up the wiki. And let's take a look at the geography. We have continent E, yeah. So continent E, which is the, the sort of northeast continent, continent, is um, is the homeland of the Khal languages, and but that that's not the only language family spoken on on that continent. There were actually several families spoken before uh, the expansion of the Khal peoples, and. Um, and these languages form a lot of the substrate that the, the place names uh, for these languages come from, uh, although adapted. Continent E, thank you, Ship. Yeah, so continent E, we need to uh, we need to figure out what we're going to call that. And I'm very happy to call it something that doesn't have a meaning now. Just call it a cool name, and then we can work out some meaning based on a myth or something like that. Because when you think about how um, how say Europe gets its name. It's uh, it's an entirely mythical affair. Okay, so Mulla Talania from Echo coming in with some very very strong names here. Let's put it through the sound changes and see what happens. Mulla Talania. Oh, that's a problem with my rules, not a problem with the uh, the form. Let's 
I think what we would get mil and tilani. So mil tilani. And where is the chat? Can okay, so Max is asking, can we list some proto call roots that uh, could be used for place names? How much do and how much do we know about the phonology of the pre-call languages? We actually have a decent amount of information here. So let me put up some some information about the call the protocol lexicon. We have a nice little spreadsheet with just that information in it. If I can find the tab. Proto lexicon. So here it is. I'm gonna I'll just scroll very slowly through it so you can see what we're we're dealing with here. The weird kid uh, has a oh Kenilu that we can definitely use that. I'm going to just very slowly go through here. If you see anything, maybe screenshot it or um, or write it down. Do we have a word for owl in Sakrat? That's a good question. All right, I've got a lot to uh, I got a lot to to do here. Lucy, it ain't easy being a presenter. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, I hear it's a hard job. I'm glad I'm on the drawing side. Uh, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> and good luck with all that. Okay, so we're almost through with the protocol. And we also have some random stuff at the bottom that I have not alphabetized. Pukwakwa, chicken. Interesting. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, and then I'm going to look at the pre-call languages. So essentially, um, we'll wait. I'll, I'll save this question to when Lucy's looking back at that other uh, continent again. But we have a few different language families at play. When, when we're talking about pre-call, we have at least three language families that that count depending on what part of the continent. And I'm going to open up the Sakrat and look to see if we have something to do with owls. We don't. We don't have a word for owl. I think we need a word, a root for owl in Proto Sakrat. So I'm going to get the inventory out for Proto Sakrat. Where is it? Here we go. So we remember the the deal with Proto Sakrat. Um, you know, we, I'm sure we all remember. You know, uh, what it is is we have a, a minor syllable and then a major syllable. The minor syllable can be uh, constant, and then any one of these vowels, a, i, u, and then the major syllable can be a consonant followed by um, r, l, y, w, and then a vowel and another consonant. And here are the here are the consonants in question. So we need a, a word for owl. Nightly songbird. Okay. Let's let's do it. So we do we have a word for night? Okay, we don't even have a word for night. So I'm going to take some of the roots that are coming in here. And I am going to T Tamwik. Paquir. Let's make one of these uh, the word for night. Maybe tekrat. 
Tekrat can be the word for night. And then we have a word for a songbird. Let's find it. Titip. So we will need to go back to Lexergy. We're gonna need to go I'm gonna open up another Lexergy tab because we're gonna we're gonna use this a lot. So in our hmm, what language should we derive it into? We could derive it into say Kranzlor. That would be fun. Let's do that. Where is sound changes? There we go. Oh yeah, Kranzlor is a, a very weird language. So let's take this into Lexergy and let's do Tekrat Titip and see what we get. Tratip. So in Kranzlor, um, night bird actually sorry the modifier orders this is the other way around titip tekrat so it would be tip trat in kranzlor so I'll just write that down tip trat and that's kind of cool all right. Night Phoenix. Huh. That could work. So instead of titip, it would be setra tekrat. Strat. Stra. Strahtrat. Strahtrat. That's cool. And the question. Does Tekrat share a common root with Sakrat? Maybe in pre-Sakrat, pre-Proto-Sakrat, it does. We'll have to, we'll have to leave that to the uh, the in-world linguist for now, though. I think, because, because that's a very intriguing suggestion. Sakrat, by the way, is the word that we use for the the uh, language family, and it means a sailor or a rider, um, and I. I I believe that in some varieties it may turn into a word for just a person. We need <laughs> we need some mythological names. Well, we have Duan Tarun, that's for sure. Uh, Elijah, yes, Kranzlor speakers were the ones who met Lenadilev speakers in the great um, cultural exchange. We'll, we'll we'll call it that. I I'm not quite sure exactly what happened yet we've been uh, we've been discussing it in the discord but uh, there are several theories lucy has taken up a new method of coloring in lucy what is going on what is this innovation is this is this a new technique that you've brought back from abroad what's going on I enlarged, I enlarged the brush. <laughs> now, is that something that you, you're going to be seeing more and more these days? Yeah, frequently changing brush sizes, very common. Uh, and it's this sort of thing that makes the pros the pros. Yeah, really high level techniques, uh, changing the size of things. Now, if you were to put a percentage on it, Lucy, what would you say our um, degree of completion is in this first and riveting stage of the map creation? I think I'm about 90% done. So if you give me another couple of minutes, if I zoom out, I've just got to go around that edge and I can reveal the next layer section. The Tarunian exchange. I love it. Oh, yes, you're right. It should be Citra. Citra. Will that make a difference? So how did Citra get, get
get bias. I swear, if I could remember my own phonology, I would be unstoppable. <laughs> and and maybe krat, the root krat is potentially related to quat. Oh, I, I gotta write this down. I gotta write this down. Okay, so, what? I don't know what's going on with this style. Wait, I learned this. Control, no. Control U, no, control shift U. Control alt U, what was it? <gasps> I was told this and I've forgotten what it was. Okay, well, I've forgotten, but there is a way of, of resetting the style that I, I don't remember. Okay, there we go. Just click normal text. So, proto sacrat quat, all focusing on this crat morphine. It's so tantalizing. Ah. Hosamalus, thank you. Hirung. That's beautiful. Let's put that in. So as you can see, we're very we're very focused today. Everything is just sort of whatever occurs to us. Hirung. And you know what I'm kind of curious about? Our our night phoenix. Strahtrat. What will that sound like in me? Let's find out. Uh, where are my me sound changes? Here they are. And I apologize for doing things off screen. Sitra tikrat. Right, that also will have to change. So sitra tikrat. In me. This is sha cha. Brilliant. To open up our our large assortment of oh my goodness, this is too many. Cha cha, and I think there may even be some tone Sunday that will mess with that. I forget how the tone Sunday works in me. Whoa! I'm just looking at this map. All of a sudden, I was I was so focused on all these sound changes that I hadn't seen. Hi, Lucy. I hadn't seen what what has happened. So, are we there? Do we have the? Do we have? the full map outlined. The coastline is done. Yes. Um, I will say, in my defense of not using the fill tool, I know of the existence of the fill tool, I promise. Um, sometimes when you fill it in, there's always a little pixel gap, and I'd rather make sure it's all nice and clean and do it all by hand than have to look for the pixel gap. So in my defense, I do know what the fill tool is, so don't worry. <laughs> Okay, um, however, kind of ready for a bit of a reveal here. Um, am I in frame? Looks like I'm You're in You're totally frame. in frame. Excellent. Perfect. So we remove the old map. Dun, dun, dun. And... <laughs> What's that noise? That was a drum roll. Um, oh, I see, I see. Okay, fine. Um, and then we add something here. That. We've got a frame. I think you need to zoom out a little bit to get the full thing in. Yeah, I might. Um... There we go. Mm. Maybe. You're off to the right a bit. Pan left? Yeah. Should be okay. Maybe. Yeah, just pan to the left, Lucy. Just. And oh, I see. It's oh, I see what it's doing. It's just recording Photoshop. No, I can't. It's uh no. Okay, we can't quite get full. I'm afraid. Here we go. So, 
Uh, it's the screen. If you zoom really out a little tiny bit, you'll get the whole thing. I can't because it won't let me move to the left due to Photoshop being Photoshop. Ah, we're modern, fine. We're fine. Modern tools of uh, technology no, and right? uh, such such things. All right, but look at this. This is beautiful. I have a couple more layers to reveal. So we have a nice little texture here, little map texture, and then bam. Here we go. We've got what? our little world. What just happened? Look at this. This is the some bits I made earlier. That's the, that's the reveal here. <laughs> Look at this. This is beautiful. How did you do this, Lucy? Um, they're just layers in Photoshop. Um, Don't sell so... yourself short. This is some fantastic work. I haven't seen this kind of work since since 1974 when Dave Morganson. Uh, made a, a drawing on my parents' garage. Well, yes, I'm, I'm not sure Photoshop existed in 1974, so... Uh, yeah. That's what makes this so amazing. Thank you. I tried to um, make the edges... I could probably go over it a bit more, actually, but I tried to make the edges look a bit more natural and less sort of angular as well. Um, well, I think it's a thing yeah, I think it looks of like beauty. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, well, so I have a little, hang on, if it will come off a shot, we can do it. Oops, there we go. There we go. The C. And the um, C. You guys can't see my layers, actually, but, um, yeah, this is just the blue of the C for now. Um, we can go into more detail there later, but that just sort of nice and bluey like that, uh, the inspo map. Um, and yeah, and I think we can do things like add, uh, you know, some trees, some rivers, and sort of slightly uh, ad lib to liver, uh, liver? <laughs> a river there, um, slightly, my bad. Um, but up to, up to everyone, uh, let me know what you would like to add. So I think what we'll do, Lucy, is we'll put a cut in here because my editor doesn't like when these segments get too long. Oh, oh your editor? Yeah, oh, um, yeah. I hear, she's, I hear she's great. I hear she's great. Yeah, you know, she's fine. She does the job sometimes. All right, so I'm going to put in a cut for YouTube here. Uh, Lucy, say goodbye to the lovely people of YouTube in the future. Bye, future YouTube. And we will see you next time. Okay, so chat, are we having fun? I'm having fun. I, I'm kind of inclined not even to take too much of a break. I want to just go back in. What do you say? Lucy, You do you need a, to stretch your legs or something? Um, I muted myself and drank some of my beverage, and now I'm fine. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm, look at me. I'm, I'm like, I'm excited. I'm going back and forth here. I'm stretching my legs. Um, so I think let's just do it. Let's go in. Uh, I'll just say hello to YouTube again. YouTube, goodness gracious, welcome back. We are doing some cartography today. Uh, we have got a map outline. It's just a, uh, it's a thing of beauty. So what we need to do is now put some cool little mountains and trees and things on it. And that is the job of Lucy. Lucy, say hello. Hello. Shall we map? Off to the side. We are mapping. We are here with Lucy. It is on. So, what is on specifically? I think we should start with some mountains. What do you think, Lucy? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, let's look at the inspo map then. Um, obviously, we don't need to copy this exactly, but it's just a nice little, you know, template. Obviously, we did in a vertical copy. <laughs> The measurements down the side, but I thought it, you know, it does, it does look quite nice uh, and does the job. Um, so yeah, the measurements, we have got it quite specific, haven't we, Colin? Mm-hmm. Let me get this grid low. Yep, that took me a while. I'm not good at math. Um, what what was it by? Was it ten by ten? Got to ask. Uh, put the original map back up. I believe it says on there. 
Yes. Right. So those are our 10 degrees. Degree. So each, yep. yeah, each of our little squares here are 10 degrees. 10 by yep. 10. Yep. Because it's equirectangular. And that's what that means. Fancy cool. words. Cool. I know. I don't know very much about cartography. But I do know this. That map is looking nice. All right, Lucy, do we have any mountains in our in our source map? We do. Oh, that's this is a different one, which is really pretty actually. Um but we have some. We have some here. This is, this quite a bit actually. Let's have a look. As um, as Lucy's zooming in, I'll say when I'm doing that <laughs> announcer voice, I almost feel the, the slight need to change the position of my S to to make it a little more a little more um, apical. That is, <laughs> is some fa that is some fantastic stuff. Like, do, do you hear that? Do you, chat, do you hear that? I think, I think a new character is emerging. A new character is emerging. Chat, you should name this character. Don't do it. See. All right. So, look at these beautiful. Yeah, we've... These are some like fantasy map mountains here absolutely gorgeous yeah they're really pretty and i very much enjoy the rivers and the shading and stuff but we'll get to that later um yeah these are very nice we should draw some where All does right. everyone let me go back to our map we actually do know what, where the mountain um, ranges are ah the big ones what, anyway um, what continent are we uh are we starting on why don't we start on the um, on continent E, which if we go up to the top right, that's that one, which is where our our Linodilef and Eustamia speakers live. Yeah, the top right one. Uh, this one. Mm hmm. Can you guys see my mouse? Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay. So and you can see my mouse too. Excellent. Mouseception. We could have like a, a slapping fight with these uh, cursors. Yeah. Well, when yours was a hand, um, it made more sense. Now it doesn't make a lot of sense. I just look like a... Yeah, I'm uh, back. Ah, uh, there you go. High five. Okay. that That's what you like to see. Um, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not a goofball. Anyway, so uh, where are these mountains going to be? Lucy, if you can get up that first layer. Uh, which layer? The, the very first oh. original Maja's map, we have, a, we have some mountains. Right, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, one second. Okay, let me... There we go. So it's this... Am I in frame? You're in yes. frame. This, this sort of grayish, brownish color. You can see this range on the northeastern coast and a, a smaller, smaller range on the east coast. Uh, okay, so this, this sort of beigey gray. The beigey oh, gray, no. yes. I don't know. What do you call that? What do you call that color? Tan? Tan. It's not quite mushroom. It's more tan than mushroom. So what I'll do is, if I will grayish computer. <laughs> Galactic Sand says you call it grayish, and Chromatech One says grayish. you call it disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on your opinion of colors. I happen to enjoy a poopy color. Thank you very much. All right. So okay. how are we going to make these so, these mountain ranges? Um. Yeah. I was. Let's see. So, um, apologies if my computer is a little bit slow. Um, he's an old bean, okay? We thank him for his service. Um, yeah, like these are just cute little sketchy things. Uh, we could give that a go. Uh, let's have a look. Get my layers in order. I'm going to be just, just looking at this for a second. And then I'll I'll start on some some ideas for place names that we can plop on this map. Let me get rid of the grid. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna doodle 
Okay. There are some little mountains. So I'm going to go on mute. Goodbye. All right. Well, then I'll have to be entertaining on my own, which is a, is, is a tall order. But I think I, I think I can try. So what we have to do is we have to come up with a name for this mountain range. And given that we don't have a huge amount of the history sketched out, I think our safest bet is to to use something like, you know, like blue or white or dark or something like that to, to name the range. So let's look at our Eustamia um, inventory. Not inventory, the lexicon, Colin, what? On earth you just say words that you see I think you do lexicon do we have apologies for the size here I think we need to zoom in or increase the font size then to stream standard 18 points and let's see what we've got um, do we have like dark oh you do we, we do we have fasana or fasana in Ustamia and Aptuma for mountain. So we could let's let's remind ourselves how the grammar works. So we have a oh apologies for everything being crunched up here, but we have a an attributive suffix C so we have something like fasanasi fasanasi aptuma that would be the dark mountains uh, that could work all right oh the sun's bed that's kind of cool i think we're going to need some more words for that though let's take a look L lexicon we don't i'm sure we don't have bed we do have Sun though. Masfa. Masfa, and then we need a word for bed. Maybe we can use quela, because that's a nice short word. Um quela. We could use it, we could have it be bed, but also um, a sort of an idea of like a source or something from which something springs up. Place of arising, I like that, um, Connor, that's a, that's a cool, that's a cool idea. So maybe it's a, a truly a root meaning rise so, quella, and let's take it through Lexergy. Kila, and then what's the status of the genitive in in Yustami? I think it's ah yeah we have this ya. Yeah this innovative ya yeah form, I remember now. So we, it would be something like masfayakila. Ooh, that sounds kind of cool. Masfayakila. I'm going to write it down. Masfayakila. Sun's um, arising. Or sun's bed. Let's put it that way. Sun's bed. That was the original, right? Uh, let's go back to the chat so I can see what you're saying. Whoa! Huh. I was so focused on this word. I didn't notice how beautiful these mountains are looking. Lucy. I have to commend you. Gosh, that's, I whipped out some of my uh, fancy brushes. <laughs> My uh, goodness. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's fine. That we're, I'm sort of copying a bit, right? It's fine. It's totally fine. You it's, could, you who, know, who could be better to copy from than Mercator himself? True. 
I don't know much about Mercator's life. But the man loved his maps. And he said. How would we put um how would we put text on this map, Lucy? However you like. Um you know, we can we can pick a nice font. We could use our standard font actually that might um work. Especially okay. what we should do because eventually we are going to have in-world writing systems with which to to write but we should use some we should use um a latin font that we can we can use as a stand-in for now and then replace it eventually yeah i mean what would be fun if, is if we made a font uh using the new uh writing system oh we actually do have a bunch of um, community created writing systems for Birai, which I'm very excited to feature Ooh. at some point. That's exciting. Goodness gracious, look at this, this mountain range. Oh, do you ever want to just sort of sit and watch someone do art and just sort of meditatively take it all in? That's what I'm feeling right now watching uh -huh. Lucy do this, but I, I realize that won't be very entertaining for, yeah. for the chat and for uh, YouTube. And you, you have you have people uh, you have people relying on you. I know I can't just be like, <laughs> ooh. Oh, I'm glad you enjoy. Masvaya Kila, Kila, Kila. Come on, Uvila, do your work. Don't say that in public. It, people might get the wrong idea. So we have some other names up here. I love this Lihali, Lihali, rather, um, for the northern continent. I love that name. And maybe Khanidim Mikna Mil Tilani are possible names of regions or cities or, or mountains or things like that in the Ustamia in the Ustamia sphere. Um, but I think what we should do now is look at some of the pre-call names because I said I was going to wait until we had the the continent up to talk about them. And SHIP has done some amazing work on two pre-call languages, two substrate languages for this continent. Um, so I will get up the notes we have here. And how will I... Yeah, we have a lot of good stuff. Let's let me just copy paste it into this world building document here. Will it let me do that thing where I can copy without I I don't understand. I don't understand anything. That's fine. So, this is a really Beautiful language here. This is for the Western um, substrate language. So we have something like Betani Bizeds, Bikik Bizeds, Biksib Bizeds. And what I think we should do is we have all sorts of stuff. Look at all of this. So for the for the Western half of the content, we can take some some substrate. Uh, some of these names as as um, pre-call place names and adapt them into adapt them into protocol or, or Ustamia. So let's see what that might look like. Let's take mm, let's take Ndita Ndolyu, Big River. Ndita Ndolyu. And let's see how that might get adapted into into protocol and then into Eustamia or into Lanavila for that matter because if it's on the west coast it may be more in the Lanavila sphere. All right, so Ndita Ndolyu 
if it's going to be adapted into protocol, it's going to have to be CVified. So let's look at the inventory of protocol. Uh, I need more. I need more windows. Okay, so let's just put this here for now. Ndita Ndita Ndolu. The question is, are we going to lose these pre-nasalized stops because they're not going to function in in this CV? So we need to get this into a CV structure. We could do one of a few things. We could appenthesize a vowel, something like Nadita Nadolu. And of course, there are going to have to be other things that change, but oops, what am I doing? We could just lose that nasalization. So we could do Dita Dolu, or we could lose the stop, Nita Nolu. Those ends are syllabic, not prenasalized. Okay, well, in that case, ndita. They may get, we still have the problem, although I think that the this epenthesis is less likely. I think maybe we might come up with something like adita adolu. Or we, yeah, Anita Anolu, because protocol has no voice stops. Anita Anolu, so that's how we'll we'll do it. And what else do we have to change? Anita Anolu, so we don't have a alia, so we'd have to we might go to Anita Anolu. And Let's see how this gets adapted into Lenathylof. You can see that, right? Okay, good. So I have to go over to our second monitor. Go to, let's see what it looks like in Lena, in um, Eustamia first. And that'll give me some, some time. That'll give me some time, excuse me. Oh my goodness, this looks very strange. So it turns into Nidinu Nidinu Yi. Whereas where this is um, rounded allophonically. This last U. Nidinu Yi. That's really interesting. Lucy, what do you think about that sound? Nidinui. Hello. Uh, that's very nice. Um, the previous one sounds like I'm going to annoy you, by the way. Anita Ndolu? No, the previous one. Anita annoy you? Yeah. <laughs> I need to annoy you. Nidinui. <laughs> so this could be um, a name of a big river in the western half of the continent. And I want to hear what it sounds like in Lenadilov, actually. That's my that's the next thing, but I have to open up another Lexergy window. Goodness gracious, this Lexergy fixation will it ever end? I doubt it. So let's go back and let's find our Lenadilov sound changes. Where are the sound changes? Here they are. Lenadilov. Apologies that you can't see what I'm doing over here but it's not that interesting I promise you and let's put in Anita Anoyu <laughs> you're right it does sound like I need to annoy you and what comes out Nadena oh that's kind of cool so Nidinoyi in Ustamia and 
Navena. And I need my special orthography. That's gorgeous. Navena is so Lena Vilev, the whole language, the whole point of that language is just a settler door factory. And it is not disappointed here. So Nidini and Navena. So if we find a place for a river, we can call it that. Now take this. What do you think, ship? Does it do justice to the originals? No, I just, I really just want to paste. Big river. All right, let's, uh, Let's stop our, our nomenclature, our onomastics, our toponymy for now. And let's look at what Lucy's done because heavens to Murgatroyd. This is beautiful. Lucy, oh, thank you. walk us through your process here. What, where does the inspiration come from? How do you do what you do? Oh, don't be silly. Uh, I was just looking at these guys, this, uh, this lovely map. And oh, we can add some color as well, which I think would be really nice. But we'll do that. We'll do that later once we've got some of the, um, some more landmarks in. Um, but yeah, this is one of my special brushes I've, I've whipped out uh, for the occasion. So yeah, glad you guys like it. I think it looks pretty. Really. Um, it's getting there. Ooh. So Lucy, we're getting some some questions from the chat. Do you have an art channel? I mean, what's what's going on here? Why are you not on there making maps day in and day out? <laughs> um, I I guess I'm an art human. I don't ha um I don't have a channel. Um, yet. I'm I'm just a oh shush. <laughs> You're the charismatic one. I'm the I'm the makes everything look fancy when you're done. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm an animator and artist person. So trying to live up to that currently, hopefully I'm doing okay. I'm glad you guys like it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Okay. I need to catch up on the chat uh, here. So the weird kid uh, has an idea for this krat root. It could mean coming and going. That's a good idea. Let's put that in as a, a potential meaning here. And we have, oh yeah, so there's some questions about what this language is. So this is a, uh, a language that is, forms a substrate to the Kal languages in the Western coast, in the Western half of this uh, continent here. Um, this one that I'm, my little hand is, is circling around. So this was uh, the language from which these words are, these phrases are drawn, was spoken around here in earlier times. And then later on in history, the protocol speakers who lived in this region here uh, expanded out uh, down south and brought their language, which turned into Lenavilev with them. And Eustamia is the name of the language that uh, stuck around in the protocol homeland. And so when Lenavilev came down, they um, displaced or replaced or something happened and, and these languages were no longer spoken, but many of their place names remain. And so there's one such family on the West Coast. There's another family it's slightly off screen. Um, oh, thanks, Lucy, on the East Coast. Um, and there's even one that's spoken around uh, closer to where a protocol was spoken. Um, and SHIP has been instrumental in devising the in devising two of those those language families. All right. 
So do we need any more mountains? We do. We do. On, on this continent, we have a second range. If you go back to the to Maja's map. Okay, one second. Uh, you see, there's you see there's a small um, a small range just to the southeast of the end of the range that you've made. Right here. Indeed. Okay. I don't know if you could see my mouse, that was a bit small, but... Okay, I will draw away. One second, please. That one is going to be probably a, a smaller and lower range. Well, this is exciting. Let's see what else we have. I'd like to do a few more um, derivations for this uh, Western protocol language, or pre-call language, rather. So let's take new mountain, or big mountain. That works. Big mountain, Tita Tizko. And let's run it through. Let's run it through the sound changes. What? Tita Tisco. There we go. So Tita works. Tisco. Uh, Tisco doesn't work as is. We'll have to change this to something like Tisco. Tita Tisco. All right. Tita Tisako. Let's put that into Eustamia first and then Lenadilef. So in Eustamia, it turns into. Oops, where? I've, I've lost my. Ah, uh, no, there it is. Tita Tisako. Titisco. Titisco. So this is Eustamia. And in Lenadilef, it turns into the disk. The disk. I guess we have geminates. Cool. The disc. So this is big mountain. And let's take that and put it here. Where where are you here? Great. Oops, what did I do? Okay, no. Everything's fine. Everything's totally fine. Colin attempts to control software. Tale as old as time. There we go. We're back. Okay. Echo, thank you so much. Can I use the Usta? Oh, can we add the Ustamia word for mountains? Yes. Okay. So, Titisku. Um, it would be Titisku Aptuma. And then in Lenadvailov, uh, I'll have to find what's the word for mountain in Lenadvailov. Mm. Do we have the lexicon? ready. I don't believe we do, so I'll need to derive it. So where is it? Where on earth could that apato? Okay, it's apato. Apato is the root 
So let's put this into Vanavailov, Hapato, gives us aft. So we get Tatisk aft. Or depending on what, I'm not sure what side of the, uh, I think I think this is correct. Titisku, titisku aptuma and titiskaft. Big mountain mountains. All right, yeah, Congor and the technical difficulties. Um, is everything fine now? I know there, I accidentally triggered some hotkey that made things uh, wonkified. Um, Nicholas, I got this shirt. Uh, this is a, I got this shirt at a very, very small store um, in, in my hometown um, many years ago at this point. And it, I don't know. I don't know where, where these, things, these things even come from. I saw it. I said, how about that shirt? I could never wear that shirt. That's, you know, I'll just... I'll give you the full screen briefly so you can sort of see what I mean. Like this shirt is way too loud. I can never wear this shirt. Fast forward to the present. I bought the shirt and of all the shirts I own, this is the only one that anyone has ever literally, and I'll just go back to the shirt here, stopped me on the street to ask about the shirt. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think I take it as a good thing, but you know, uh, I think scholars will debate that for years. I look back and look, there are more mountain ranges. Lucy. What's growing going on? many mountains? Many mountains. Well, I, I assumed, I assumed these were also mountains. So let's get going. I am correct, right? Indeed they are. Indeed they are. There's a big guy here. Uh, oh, I've got discord okay. itself on the screen. Okay. Sorry. Th things got wonkified again. Uh, I don't know. Ah, ah, wait, wait, wait. I've made a mistake. There we go. <laughs> I don't know. I declare bankruptcy, guys. Is it is it not the different screen in the settings? I, you know okay. what? It, it's fine. It's all done now. It's fine. We're back. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, oh, you can see my layers, guys. Not anymore. Oh, hello. Dun dun dun. Okay. Well done. You fixed it. Colin Gore in the technical difficulties. I believe that's book four. Um, yeah. Okay. Fine. This is what editing is for. Probably. This is what editing is for. This is what joy and and intro material is for. Um, okay, let's make some more place names while we're looking at this beautiful, beautiful cartography. Okay. There needs to be, what else? I want to I want to do this one. Bak Bimbiwa. Bimbiwa. Small temple. I feel like this could be okay, randomly this has gone a different color. I don't know why. I'm being oppressed by technology right now. I'm being grievously harmed. Bak Bimbiwa. Small temple. Let's turn that into a Lenadilef word. Where did it go? Here we go. Lenadilef and Yustamia. So, back Bimbiwa small temple. Interesting. I see. I see German on in the chat. Ah, because because Queen's in Vienna. Cool. B 
but well, you know, despite all of that, um, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call eyes um, this this phrase. So back being Oh, should we do, should we put in a break? I guess we should because well, so the last one will be about half an hour. Um, so let's do a little bit of a uh, suspense. Viewers, stay tuned. If you want to know how we adapt Bak Bimbiwa into Ustamia and the Lenadilov, come back for the next episode. Um, Lucy, want to say anything to to future YouTube as a farewell? Um, I'm hoping you're enjoying the extensive mountain doodling. Uh, come back for more and possibly trees. Trees? Oh. Maybe. It could happen. We'll see you next time. Okay. Okay. We are stretching. We are hydrating. Yeah, I'm definitely hydrating. <laughs> I want to thank you, Ship, for these amazing uh, place names. These are amazing. Uh, I said amazing twice, but it's just that's how I feel. I can't lie. So I look forward to adapting more of them, especially, yeah, especially, I wish, hmm, yeah, I wish we could do a little showcase on this one day, on these, uh, on these languages, on the pre-call languages, and, you know, we can come up with a little history for, for the speakers and everything, that'll be fun. Okay. All right. Lucy, are you ready to go in for, for round three? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm just doodling. Okay. <laughs> well, it. then let's do it. YouTube, welcome. As always, it's a pleasure to have you here with us. I'm here with Lucy. We are making maps. Say hi, Lucy. Hiya. I thought Welcome. you were going to say hi, Lucy. Yeah. Oh, hi, Lucy. It. Oh, I should. I missed, I missed, I missed my cue. Well, Honestly, I should have rehearsed. Here's what we'll do. We'll make a, a beautiful map to make up for it. I'll try. I see people are trying to curse me by uh, trying to make me pronounce implosives on screen. Not my strong suit. So to distract you, I'll show you this map. Um, let's, to, let's catch up. Uh, YouTube, if anyone's just jumping into this uh, for the first time, what are we doing, Lucy? We are creating a hopefully rather pretty map. Um, can you see the whole map on screen at the moment? More or less. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Beautiful. Um, so if we remove this layer and... This is what we're, we're working with right now. So we've got little mountains uh, coming in on the top to continents. Um, they are continents, aren't they? Yeah. They are. Yeah, they are. Um, yep, we've got uh, mountain ranges coming in on the top two continents. And uh, yeah, we've got, the, well, the rest of it's just put pretty plain right now. Probably need some rivers and forests we're talking. Yeah, we'll need some rivers and forests. Maybe we could, I don't know, are you close to being uh, finished your mountain range? Maybe we can transition over to uh, Project Forest. Yeah, sure. We'll probably have to draw about one more mountain in there. Though. All right, but let's yeah, do it. Um, if you introduce, I'll if I If I introduce? What did you want I me don't to know. If, 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 you tell, if you tell me what to do, I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> All right. That sounds good then. So uh, Lucy's going to finish up this uh, one mountain range and we are going to, I think we should do two things with our remaining time, which is roughly half an hour. We should make a few little forests, stands of trees and, and whatnot. Uh, and then we should also attempt to put some words on the map because we've been making some fun uh, place names. So I promised last video that I would show you what becomes of Bak Bimbiwa, a meaning small temple. So let's see. 
To adapt this into protocol, we'll need to CVify it. So we need to do something like Baka, actually Paka, P, and we've already decided that these these nasal um, these nasal voice stop clusters are going to turn into nasals. So Paka Pimiwa. small temple as adapted into protocol. And now let's see what happens to it when it goes through the Eustamia sound changes. So we get Pakpimiu, which is interesting. I've never seen a, a W ending on, uh, on a Eustamia word before that I know of. Pakpimu and in Lenathilef, how is it going to be Celadorified? Huh. It turns into Fakfima, which is an interesting development. Fakfima. Got to be careful when you say that one. So that's the small temple for you. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it into our world building document. So it becomes Pakpimu in Eustamia and Pakfima in um, in, in Lanadilov. Right, okay. Let's see if there's anything else we can do while Lucy's finishing this up. Now, am I correct in thinking that there's some sort of a, there's some sort of a, an agreement system going on in this? Maybe Ship can comment on this if, Ship, if you're in the, in the chat. What is the nature of the boti Beteni, Boti, we have Boti here, but then we have Ndoti, Ndolu, Ndak Ndolu. But then we have another one. I saw another. So small temple, Bak, Bak Bimbiwa, small river, Ndak Ndolu. So is this a noun class system? So these are our Bantu style noun classes where we have where each noun has a an intrinsic um, class that it uh, that it requires other things to agree with it in. Very cool. Does it have the same uh, situation as uh, I believe Bantu does with different singular and plural classes? Or how does pluralization work in this language? And Lucy, question for you. Are you about ready to do some forests? Ah, I see you're starting on a new yeah. range. Yeah, do, do, I, I can finish that later. Let's, um, Shall we do a bit of forestry? Sure. And um, would rivers make more sense first? That's a question. That is a question. Um, well, we could put in one, at least one river going from that mountain range, uh, the big mountain range, that's the one, uh, towards the sea on the west. I'm not up to date on the um, on the river placement method, so chat, uh, we will look to you for help on this one. All right, so where should we put this river? I'm going to assume that we're going to put it going from somewhere in this mountain range to the sea in a more or less not straight line but a slightly maybe a slightly meandering path 
Um, does anyone in the chat have any suggestions? Actually, to make a river um, via this setup, I just start erasing uh, the original layer I do. So easy to undo if we want to change it. Um, so just let me know. Okay, so we have we have our mountain range where it will start and our sea where it will end. And because everything is always going to flow downhill. Quain is put sense. Quain says make it run to the northwest. So let's do that. And then make it run where from the start from from the step border to the Ustamia heartland. So the step border is right at the very bottom of the screen. Um, yeah. It's on the other continent. Ah. So right where Down the blue here. turns to orange in this region. I So I can't see your, um, I'm looking at a delay from the stream. Right, but do so you see where the, to, um, the blue meets the orange there? Blue meets the orange here. Yeah. So is, my, is my hand in the right place? It is, it is. Okay. And where, okay, where's it coming from? This side? Uh, it's coming from the mountains because from that's the, the, oh, the source. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. And, and we'll the have it is running to the northwest. So up here? Yeah. And maybe, okay. you know, curving as it goes. And... Okay. We'll look to the chat for suggestions as we as we go. Yep. So if I erase too much or what you don't want, just let me know and I'll put it back in. All right. Rivers like to meander a bit, don't they? Quain suggesting it can go along the the range for a sec, but then turn northwest, and it may have some lakes pop up along its course. Okay. So maybe it should it should flow sort of alongside the the mountain range for a while and then come up and go out to the sea a bit farther north than we have it now. So we could do perhaps this. And then we'll also have it joining up with some others uh, or some other ro rivers flowing into it here and there. Oh, Maj points out that the scale on which these rivers meander will be too small for us to see. So they'll mostly be non wobbly. And the question um, Elijah is asking, which is the river you're not supposed to cross? That was on one of the southern continents in the in Ming speaking territory. Oh, Quain's going to be leaving us in 10 minutes. Well, we're glad that we, you were able to catch part of this, Quain, and, and happy travels. All right, Lucy, mm -hmm. I'll read off to you the chat. Um, yeah, they'd curve but um but mostly not meander that's good to know and what is it that controls when we get a lake in the middle of a river in the course of a river yes i'm just winging it so uh <laughs> see you galactic sand thanks for joining us packing to go off to university, college. I don't know. People, different countries have different terminology for these things. Cool, cool. How does everyone feel about this? Okay, so as for the question of, um, so we have a few things. 
Lakes can form when several rivers meet. They're pretty random and on flat, uh, flat plateaus. Connor points out that rivers can join up, but not, uh, but don't tend to split, except at deltas. Okay, meaning this guy needs fitting back in. Mm -hmm. And I think we maybe the river maybe a, a touch wide. If it depends, are we doing this sort of stylistically or? Up what, to you guys. You guys tell me what you want. What does our source map have for rivers? As in the, ah, oh, right. Uh, yeah, so big. they're quite, they're quite thin, except at they're the, very skinny. at the, uh, Point where they Make meet the sea. Bits. And we have this one as well. It's a little different. I don't know what this middle thing's about, but it looks fun. <laughs> That's supposed to be the North Pole, and I don't think it's necessarily Is it? the most accurate. No, I didn't think it was a landmass, right? Okay. Um, should I make this a little bit thinner then? Yeah, make it a, like a quite thin line, I think. Like you had at the start. Okay, okay. And I think we should call this the uh, Nidinu, this one, for those who can see the chat, the big river. There is some absolute gold coming in the chat right now for, for where lakes are formed and how rivers work. So Holly says that uh, most things with rivers are caused by a resistance of the water flow. Bends and lakes generally form at areas of resistance or knack, uh, lack thereof. Um, and then Sauten points out that lakes are at a lower elevation than the surrounding area within, within meters. And groundwater, rainwater accumulation, lower ground uh, from Quain. And then Sauten says when groundwater is above ground, you get oasis uh, or swamp slash marshlands. Nidinui. Yeah. Okay. How does everyone feel about that? Is it still a bit thick or? I think it's a still a little bit thick in the green zone. Ooh. Okay. That's nice. Cool. Do we want a lake? I guess it was where they meet. I mean, we could have another one coming, I think, uh, you know, from this side, maybe. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Uh, Queen says a, a tad bit thinner. Okay. Yes, sir. Oh, and, and Jack says the little island in the delta is chef's kiss i i translated that from the uh, from the original but yeah very oh, good nice. Thank you. jack didn't literally say chef's kiss that was my editorial <laughs> that was my editorial commentary and we have some fantastic some fantastic islands in this delta have you ever seen an island like this steve no no i haven't uh, i haven't colin You never, Steve, and <laughs> you'd never have a sportscaster named Colin, though. I feel. I mean, is there one? I don't know. I feel like there's a real name equals destiny thing when you name someone Colin. That there's just going to be a certain degree of, you know. Okay, well, nerdiness. Well, yeah, nerdiness. I was going to say there are some exceptions. Obviously, Colin Farrell, I think, would be a good uh, a good exception. 
Um, but even yeah, with yeah, there you go. But but even with Colin Firth, I still feel there's a bit of nerdiness going on there. He's um he's British and awkward. That's the charm. Exactly. Okay, Queen's officially out. See you, Queen. Bye, Queen. Okay. This is another tiny island. I hope that's okay. Pretty. All right, let's get another river flowing into this one. Already. Okay, let's. How about from here? O'Connor has a good idea. Maybe the area near the beginning of the river is an area of hilly footlands, like um, like foothills to the mountains. Sounds. How about, how's roughly this for our next uh, river? I'll make it a bit thinner in a sec, but does that make sense? Chat. Island inside lake, last word from Quain. Island inside lake, okay. Well, this could be a little lake here then, if that's where rivers join. Mm -hmm. Do a little thing and all. And yeah, <laughs> the crowd is cheering Lake Island, Lake Island. <laughs> okay, let's see, Lake Island. There it is. Okay, we've got lots of good suggestions. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get through all of them. Um, Connor says, lakes can have many rivers feeding into them, but typically only one river leading out. Um, okay, that's what we've got. And uh, I'm not sure about the IP on this, but is it Mikhail? Um, says it looks perfect with the broadening of the lake. Oh, good. Um, Excellent. <laughs> yeah, and there could be a cool city on that island or something. Oh, that would be so cute. Um, oh, Michael? Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Um, uh, Maj says uh, that rivers will tend to run away from highlands and less so parallel to them. So maybe we could have it uh, go a bit away from the, in, its, in the river's early course, we could have it go away, a little bit away from that mountain range, unless... A bit more here. Yeah, maybe something yeah. like that. Perhaps? Yeah, what do we think, chat? Does the mountain range have volcanoes? I don't know. Ooh. Geologists, come help us. Okay, so should I get rid of the other? Um, yeah, I think the let's get rid of the first, the first one so that it's not so um, close up against the mountain. And then... Oh, I'm going to adapt this place name because we're going to put a city in that. City in the lake. Billy Zek Batik. Oh, that's so nice. So how is this going to work? So Billy Zek So, sorry. Billy Zek Batik. That's a, a mouthful. Let's see what it looks like in Eustamia. Oops, that was Lenadarlof. <laughs> 
Pizik. So it turns into Pizik, Lucy. That's cute. That's very cute. Oh, okay. Look should, at this. We, could, we should have another one coming in. It's very pinwheely. That's kind of fun. Or maybe we could have that. So I think the idea is, let me get back to the chat because I think there are more good suggestions coming in. Oh, Billy Batikzek. Okay, I'll, I'll fix that. Um, okay, okay, okay. Billy Batikzek. So that would be Piyi Patika Zeka, Patika Seka. Piyi Patika Seka, something like that. And then let's go back to the, look, I'm getting like a multitasking workout today. Well done. <laughs> Piyi Padigizik. So, P. Pad. Padigi. Right, that is, yeah. P. Padigizik. P. Padigizik. Padigizik. Tough. Tough one to say. <laughs> DL, yeah, <laughs> sorry, we've uh, we've been going on for a while with this stuff. Um, if you're at episode three of the Calling With Me series, the language that we're developing there is the one that uh, I'm running, that we're calling Eustamia, and that is spoken in the area that we're making this river system in. So it all, you know, it all connects eventually. Hola. Okay, let's see what Lucy's been up to. I like this, Lucy. This is nice. Oh, good. Do you think um, do you think it needs any other leading in visits? Because I feel like if you put a um, hold on, hold on, if you put some, you know, I don't know something there. It looks a bit like a pinwheel, which I enjoy. Yeah, I think having other rivers come from this mountain range and join up with this system that would be a good thing. And Jack says that the mountain ranges on continent E were made by old active margins, but probably the volcanoes will have dwindled by now. So not volcanic. Right, should I keep going with the different bits coming off the mountain? I or? think so, yeah. Okay, here we go. More, more rain coming. Maybe this one, if that one up there can go directly to the sea. Uh, yeah, could too. I mean, it all depends, I guess, on where our other elevation is. Because yeah, where the, would you like it to come out? The river is not going to take a, a course that's, um, it's going to take the, the fastest course, the, the most straightforward. I'm feeling like they, these are quite big, these, some of these ones. Like, if I were to do like through here, perhaps it would be less meandering. But we'd have to have some hills, I think, up there on the left side of that, on the west side of that, to make it veer up and away from the shortest course. Okay, but these are this is this is all very flat. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay. Holly says, the more rivers we add, I feel like the lake should get, um, should continue getting yes. bigger. Sure. And I see, I'm just relating mm -hmm. chat here. That's my job today, but that, that's good because chat, <laughs> the, chat is the place where the wisdom is. And um, Ship says, it takes the most direct course at each point, but overall that might mean that it has a less straightforward course. Yeah, 
you know, when you zoom out to see the whole thing. Yeah, this is this doesn't look the most naturally drawn, actually. Obviously, I'm not talking from a, um, a scientific point of view, but um, geologists. Oh, I was going to, sorry to interrupt you there, Lucy. I was going to ask geologists in the chat, do you think we'll have any hills in this, in this area, given how it formed? And I believe Jack is the one who knows how it formed um, because it was from an old active margin. So behind that, do we have a lot of foothills or is it just going to be flat? I don't know. <laughs> After I'm you finish this, the reveal. what's that? I'm looking forward to the reveal when I take the layers off. Me too. <laughs> Sorry, can continue. Um, uh, would you like some text? Would yeah, you like some let's do some text parts? before we go, because we have five okay, minutes left. Okay. How does everyone feel about that other river? I feel it looks like a dinosaur. chat there'll be a slight delay while while chat's messages get back to us simple and to the point says ship <laughs> it's a happy turtle it is a happy turtle it is a happy turtle maybe that's a place name there madge says uh, add some tributaries a few little Going into it. Going into it. Going into it. And do. Yeah, that looks better, doesn't it? Feel like saying needs to be said for this one. Yeah, I feel like I need to study atlases a bit more and, and learn what these patterns look like. So much to learn, Lucy. I know, there was this. I'm just doing it from sort of, I don't know, map memory. Not that I stare at maps often. You don't stare uh, at maps? No, well, just... to drive, but I don't think, um, ah, like, you know, Apple or Google Maps really has the same effect as these pretty old maps, but you know. Um, Maybe one coming in from I that didn't... northern part of the, the range into that top top river, yeah. the grinning pig. <laughs> from about here? Yeah. Although it would ha probably have trouble going over that that elbow of the of the mountain, right? I don't know how literally you want. You mean those? You know the the individual mountains. Are those individual mountains, or is that just vibrating? Well, there's going to be some artistic license, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair enough then. Uh, but uh, you know the shattered we'll swine. <laughs> All right, we, I think, need to put in some text before we go because we're really running out of time here. Okay. So shall we? Not bad. This is looking pretty nice. So shall we name mm -hmm. one of the rivers? Sure, let me get text working. Oh, that's a bit big. Got a Lauren Ipsum. What do we uh, What do we want? Okay, so we we want um, N I. Is capitals fine? Yes, ideal. N Oops. Uh, N I. T I. T I. N, and let's do this old style. N V. IV. 
Where does this go? And so is this too big? This is Big River. So let's put it on one of the big rivers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and then you know, I can, I can let's look at the source it. at our inspiration map, Lucy, so that we can uh, see how they arrange it. Because they do this thing where they put like two letters and then they d press enter, essentially. Oh, yes, true, true. They're mm. not all sophisticated like modern cartographers are, following the, mm. you know, snaking along the river. Yeah, they're all twisted. And actually, I mean, maybe the other one's... Um... Oh, or is it a bit too zoomed in? Yeah, they're, they're not all caps. Oh, some are. Hmm. What do you fancy? Well, Imagine. it looks like the rivers are actually not all caps. They're italics. Mm. So let's okay. let's That's do that. Fine. Let's do that. Okay. And they're sort of rotated a bit. And mm -hmm. Okay. Where? In which case you can change the um, the Vs to Us. These to use. Okay. Oops. Why did I do those? I can't wait to see. And that I could become a J as well, I think. Both of them? No, no, just the. Uh, no, just keep, actually, just keep them all eyes for now. I'll, I'll think about this. We'll just see what the vibes look like. But there's still a capital I at the end. Oh, yes. Thank you. Okay. Can we zoom in a little? It's very. I think it's a bit hard to see for the, the people in the... And let's see what it looks like with that final I being a J. Because that's actually what the... I know I being a J. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Oh, what well, are you doing with wonky. the... Uh... It's a little bit wonky, but I think I enjoy it. Where would you guys like it? I think... Here? Yeah, somewhere along the the course of the river there. Looks a bit wonky due to Photoshop being Photoshop, but when you zoom out. Lucy, this Oops. is beautiful. Chat, I think we need to give Lucy a big a big round of applause here. This is oh, you're very stellar sweet. stuff. Stellar. Well, we haven't done the reveal yet. All Can right, shall we do the reveal? Because we're basically, we're actually over time, but we're going to run a little bit longer because we, we were a little bit late coming in. So let's see. What do we have? Okay, got the texture, we've got the C, there we go, and then, there we go, this is it so far. Obviously that text is very small, but we're getting there. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. Everyone, Lucy. <laughs> Fantastic. Like Fantastic. Fantastic. Well it is a happy continent, yes. <laughs> it is a happy continent. And you know what, Lucy? Let's let's have you back on the stream again soon to develop uh, to develop to develop it. To develop it some more. That's what I want to say. Yeah. Um I have to say I'm much more com uh, comfortable mostly just sitting here drawing than I am having to use my brain to like, you, you know, say things. <laughs> So I'm fine to come back. Excellent. I'm glad you guys enjoyed. Oh, well, thank you all chat to you as well and to YouTube in the future for uh, for joining us for this. this has been a lot of fun. Um, and let's see, let's put us back on, let's say goodbye to the map by map. Um, bye and map. I'll, I'll, I'll bid you all farewell. Lucy, any final words to uh, to say to our audience before we sign off YouTube? Uh Thank you for watching me draw for two hours. Um, I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> ah.
I predict that they have. Um, and come back soon, and we will do some more conlanging, world building, linguistics, all of the good jazz that we do. So until then, YouTube and chat. Thank you so much for for taking part in this. This has been a really really fun stream, and we've come up with something that's absolutely gorgeous. Lucy Lucy is so talented. It's honestly, it's it's almost too much because you know you don't want to make any. You know, I don't want to give her words that are not like fully up to, to scratch because these are going to go in a beautiful typeface. They're going to be on a beautiful map. They have to be the best. Thank you all chat for contributing and for shoring up the, the stuff that we don't know and, and for giving your suggestions. You've really enriched everything that we do. Um, if you're not on the Discord, that's where a lot of the brainstorming and, and fun, um, you know, fun plans of all of this kind of stuff happens. So check us out there. The link's in the description. And other than that, I think, um, oh, there's one thing I was, uh, I want to, um, to let you know about. Uh, there's a link to this in the Discord, but I'm going to be doing a, uh, an event in the next, um, in the coming weeks on uh, the, uh, in, I believe it's next Thursday. We're having an event on the environmental effects on language. So this is something that is probably interest, of interest to you if you're a conlanger. Um, this is, uh, you know, does do different elevations, do different degrees of humidity, do these have an effect on linguistic features? And so I'm going to be doing an event co-hosted with uh, Damian Romero, and we are going to be having fun talking about that. So that's coming up too. There's a link to that in the Discord announcements. So other than that, we will see you next time, everyone, next Tuesday. Be here um, at same same Birai time, same Birai channel. Until then, <laughs> we will see you soon. <laughs>